Welcome to Bilingual Analytics, where I help you to learn more about Microsoft Power BI. My name is Roland, and today's video is all about dynamic time period comparison. First of all, let's talk about the problem that we are going to solve today. Let's say that Bilingual Analytics decided to introduce new products or services, in our case, different subscriptions, and we would like to measure, in a sense, adoption rate, meaning that we would like to measure how our sales have changed let's say between last week and the week before that, or last 10 days versus 10 days before that. I think this is a very common way of analyzing early results from a new product or product range. We don't really have last year's sales, so we cannot measure growth compared to that, but we still need to measure that our different activities against a new portfolio were successful and we are on the right track. Speaking of successful activities, if you learned something new from this video or managed to successfully implement this solution in your reports, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. This would help me to measure the success of this video. I'm not going to spend too much time on each and every DAX measure in the file. If you want to download it, make sure to visit the blog post where you will find the link for it so you can start adjusting it to your needs. With that said, Let's head over to Power BI Desktop and start exploring the solution. Before we start to talk about the data viz, let's talk about the slicers on this page, the dummy data, and the measures that I created to be used in the visualization. In the top right corner, I have a slicer to only include the new products. These are the different subscription services for books, comics, and magazines. Below that, I have a what if parameter, which is going to drive my dynamic intervals. If you want to learn a bit more about what if parameters, click on the link at the top right corner, where I explain in more detail how to use them and why I believe that they are a super powerful user interaction tool in Power BI. By default, I have seven days selected, meaning that I want to compare last week to the week before that. The final goal is to allow users to select whatever time period makes sense to them, and the what if parameter can help with that flexibility. In the middle, I have a table with the sales by date to show some historical figures and more importantly, to help validating my measures. On the right hand side, I have five DEX measures. Let's spend a bit more time to explore these. The first one or last day in period measure is going to help to identify the last day that should be included in the calculation. While this could be a variable in the final calculations, for the purpose of this exercise, I wanted to create a dedicated measure. You will see why. The second measure is a simple sum of sales for the periods between today and the selected time period. I use the dates in period function to drive the filter argument for the calculate function. Our third measure is an average sales for the selected period, dividing the last x days sales with the what if parameter to allow flexibility in the calculation. After that, I have somewhat similar set of sales and average sales measures for the previous period. This time, my start date is the last day in the period, but apart from that, measure number four and five are almost exactly the same as measure number two and three. And if we use our best friend, Excel, we can see that these measures are showing us the right figures, which means that it is time for us to start working on the data viz. I would say that there are two ways to visually present this data. The first method is focusing on the difference or change from the previous period to the last period. These two column and line charts are showing either sum of sales or average of sales values and increase or decrease. I reckon this kind of visual representation is great, but when it comes to new product introduction to the market, it may not be the most beneficial. It is possible that one of our customers purchased huge volumes in a single day and combining a full time period can hide some issues in this case, but it is more insightful than just seeing a matrix with lots of numbers. Of course, we still have the general functionality of the slicer to only select a certain subscription type. Just like that, the second visualization method is going to be more powerful and probably more insightful at least based on my experience. Let's start from a simple column chart where we have dates and total sales. Of course, it is almost the same as the table from the first page, but we are going to enhance it a lot. Let's add a dynamic title for this visual by using my dynamic time period comparison header. It is a little bit of text with the what if parameter for the time period.
Secondly, let's create a measure to show the average sales for this period. I called it the rolling average sales measure. While I know it's not a rolling average per day, it is still in a sense a rolling average for the period. At this point, I need to flex something which is going to be important for a few more measures. Have a look at my last day variable. It is not just referring to the last day in period measure, I had to add one day to it. Why? The reason behind that is the result that measure gives us, which is the 31st of October. And it is all about that whole greater than or greater than or equal to setup. While I can use the last day in period measure when it comes to allocating sales, I cannot use that to nicely visualize my data. It's a bit of a hack when it comes to data viz. Next up is coloring those plain blue bars. This step is personal preference, so you don't have to replicate this. However, I found it heaps easier to immediately see the different periods. Again, it will be driven by a measure, daily sales coloring. Lastly, let's add an x-axis constant line to split the two time periods. This step is all about further guiding our users to see where we literally draw the line for the time periods. Heading over to the analytics pane and add one. In the values, all we need to do is add our first measure, last day in period, as this is going to split the visual nicely. Oh no, it doesn't look good, right? I don't want the column of the 31st of October to have that line. It looks ugly. So what can we do? Again, this is due to the nature of that whole greater than versus greater than or equal to. But how can we fix it? Easy. We can create a measure in our what if table, which will be used as an x axis constant line. All we need to do is pick up the last day in period and add 12 hours. With this step, we already used two DataViz hacks in this video, which means that we deserve a pat on the back. Alright, so we have all these great DAX measures created, we have two options to pick from when it comes to the DataViz, but how does Power BI know what time period should be listed in the report? Unfortunately, we cannot create a calculated flag in our date table based on the what-if parameter. Calculated columns and tables cannot reference slicer values as they are calculated when we load the data. Which means our options are limited, but it doesn't mean we cannot make it happen. Let's head back to Power BI and I show you how to overcome this issue with some smarts. On my DataViz report page, I have a page level filter. While I could technically add the visual level filter to the bottom visual, I reckon in most real life reports other visuals will be added to the same page and this way it's just easier to manage a single date filter. By default I have a relative date filter for the last 14 days, including today. The including today bit is super important as I'm driving my calculations using a today function. It works fine because I have 7 days selected, but if I expand my dynamic period to 10 days, the page level filter won't change automatically. But hold on, a notification popped up out of nowhere that I need to adjust my page level filters. And once I change 14 days to 20 days, including today, the reminder disappears. It is driven by our last measure, a date checker.
It's a simple measure, but the end result is super helpful for our users. And with that last measure, our report is ready to be used by our users. Based on my experience, this second method is much more insightful and using this visualization, it would be easier to drive further actions for our newly introduced subscription-based services. However, I would still show total sales and average daily sales for the period, but probably only in a card visual. Something like this. While it's great to see lots of details, management would also need to see high-level figures and understand whether the new portfolio worth all the extra investment or not. Please keep in mind that I used today as a starting day for this demo, but with some adjustments you can pick any other starting day. It could be the last invoice date, or end of the month, or end of the week. Because we drive all the calculations from a DAX formula, it could be flexible. But one thing to remember is the page level filter. If you decide to use any other starting point than today, you won't be able to use relative date page level filter. For those scenarios, you have to change the filter type to advanced filtering and set your start date and end date. It's not the end of the world and I'm pretty sure that some of you will need to adjust that based on the report refresh frequency. Again, with some adjustments to this technique, you can fully personalize it to your and your report users liking. Wow, we covered a lot today, even without writing the measures together. So let's try to summarize the key points from today's video. First of all, we wanted to find an insightful way of visualizing sales figures for new products for a dynamic time period and compare it to the previous period. This would allow us to see whether the sales from the new product range is picking up or not. We had to create measures to find these periods, to indicate sales figures and average sales figures for those periods and allow users to interact with the report based on what time period makes sense to them. In the report, we also covered two distinct ways of visualizing data and talk about which one is useful for who and how can we enhance them to create an easy to understand data with. And we also learned a couple of little data visualization hacks today. Isn't that great? Make sure to check out the blog post because that's where you can find the file so you can further explore and fine-tune it to your likings. Also, if you have any questions, comments, be sure to let me know below this video so I can address them as soon as possible. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope that all of it made sense and you learned something new today. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button on your way out or before you watch any of the above tutorials. Until the next one, see ya!